Yeah, all good. The, audio, the volume level is okay? Okay, good. As long as, you know, this starts turning, as long as I'm not meditating, it's, it's going to turn like this. <laughs> this. This could be a problem, hey. That could, this could be a problem. I don't know how do I stop this if I want to have my legs crossed. I have put something against, I prop this against it. Okay, well done. All right, let's do the method stuff. All right. This is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, not be busy with duties and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud and demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove, wishing in gladness and in safety may all beings be at ease whatever living beings there may be whether they are weak or strong or meeting none the great or the mighty medium short or small the seen and the unseen those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be happy. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let through anger or ill will wish harm upon another, even as a mother protects with her life her child, her only child. So with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings, radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outwards and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, <clears throat> seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding. By not holding to false views, the pure-hearted one, having clarity of vision, being freed from all sense desires, is not born again into this world. Sadi, sadi, sadi. Thank you, Bhante. No worries. Um, I give it to you and Bhante Medito to give us your introduction to meditation and a guided meditation. Thank you. Very good. So welcome everybody. Yep, uh, as you, as Rachel said, um, I don't usually teach that often, or uh, at least here in BSWA, I haven't been. I've been here for nine years, and these are one of the only times I've taught. I've I've been actually teaching a bit more in um, BSV, the Buddhist Society of Victoria. I was there for a couple of years. Now came back here, and now I've been sort of the building monk. So if anything I've learned last nine years is how to pour concrete. So. Whether I know how to teach a meditation, that's another question. But well, let's see what's going to happen. So um, I was introduced, in, uh, introduced to meditation while I lived in the United States. And um, I was part of this. Uh, I, was, um, I was always intrigued about that I wanted to learn meditation. And, um, um, but I never got around finding any groups. And then I, I landed in New York. I had a really good time, I had a good good job, I had a lot of free time, I could go into this and I, I just found this really nice group and uh, of where I could go and meditate. Um, 
or it was like, rather like a yoga studio. And I started to go in then, and the, in this yoga studio, there was all these different groups medi meditating there. There were inside meditation group, and there were Tibetan groups, and Theravada group, and then one, one group which I really um, I found resonance was this group called Dharma Punks. There were like a lot of um, young, young, young people, like I was young at the time. I was just a bit over 20, and I felt that they were really, um, I resonated with them. But one thing is I found that it was really good for me to um, meditate with other people as a group. Even now we're doing, because of the COVID situation, we have to do this over the Zoom. But it's still, we have this community. We, um, we are like-minded people. We all are interested in what's happening in our own minds. And having as a, as a, as a, this kind of like a group activity, it brings you in like, you, you need to now put phone aside. You need to put a little bit of your, your life aside for whatever we're doing this. I actually, nobody told me how long we're going to do this. Uh, maybe Rachel, you can, <laughs> you can tell me what should we be doing. Nobody told me the schedule. I forgot. Um, so uh, we... we Okay, so just uh, as long as we finish by 8.30, right. we usually meditate about 7.30 to 30 minutes. Okay, so I have to, I can't really see, I can see, just see the clock there. So, okay, 8.30 we finish and then sure. I can remind you as we go. Yeah, okay, okay good. And um, so as a, as a group, it's, it's nice. So you, it, it sets this kind of schedule. Okay, it's a Tuesday night. It's an, you know, you're a part of the Armada group. You set aside the time. You, you know your mind is almost like prime for that. It's like, now we're going to meditate. It's so easy when you, when you meditate by yourself. You go into uh, these habits where you start dreaming about things. You... Maybe you don't feel like meditating, so you after 10 minutes, you just get up, start stroking your phone, which needs your attention. Um, but now, as a, as a group, we, we are sort of now have the same aim. And th th that's one of the things or the, the Buddha said, um, which is, aids into the enlightenment, is like we, we have to have the right aim. Um, right mind state that we actually set ourselves now that okay i'm now meditating even if it's not maybe fun even if it's you are bored you are restless whatever is in your mind sometimes only thing you can do about it it's endure meditation is not always going to be very peaceful. At least in the beginning, we have these daily things which comes on, uh, uh, it sort of flows into your meditation in the beginning quite easily. You sit down, you start relaxing. The day, daily life just sort of flows into your mind and whatever has happened in your daily life, it's there. It's, it, it sets your mind in a certain way. We have to learn as a meditator one of the skills as a meditator is to learn how to look at it a little bit in the beginning and just tell yourself, okay, now it's time to put it aside. Now is the time, it's actually not to solve problems. Now is the time when I'm just gonna be taking care of myself, turning off the screen, turning off putting aside the rest of the life. So let's try to do that. So as always, take a comfortable seat, comfortable position, and relax the body a little bit. Wherever you're sitting, make sure your body is nice and soft. You can move a little bit. Just feel like, uh, what's the best place for your body to settle down? And then breathe in a little bit deep. Just give a couple big sighs. 
Now it's time, time to relax. <sighs> now there's nothing to do. Nowhere to go. For this little while, for a little while on this end of this day, I can just relax. Ajahn Brahm always has this simile, it's like you can imagine it's like that moment when you're coming from school and it's the last day in the school and the summer holiday is waiting. It's the holiday in front of you. Imagine that feeling, what it feels like. It's that feeling of no expectations. You don't have to plan your future. And the busyness of the day is gone. Now it's just relaxing. And then we start relaxing the body by giving attention to the places where you might have some tension in the body. Quite often we don't pay attention to those signals we get from the body. The body is always telling us this. if there is something wrong, but quite often we just ignore it and we just push through our lives. Now we can actually look a bit more carefully what's happening in the body. So we start by paying attention on the Big toe on your right foot. What is the feeling there? Does it feel cold? Is there pressure there? And we try to relax that one toe. We give it all the kindness we and softness we, we have. And then we start moving with the other toes, one at a time, on that right foot. Next toe, give it softness and relaxation. Next toe, now we should be in the middle toe. And then again the next one, going towards the pinky, the small toe. Relaxing, can you feel if there's any pressure or any feelings there? And even the smallest of the small toe there on your right foot. Let it relax, give it kindness. So all your toes on your right foot are now kind and soft. And let's do the same thing on your left foot. But let's start with that small one this time. Start with the small toe. Give it kindness and softness and gentleness. But then we keep going up to the next toe. Let it relax. The middle toe in your left foot. Can you actually feel it? Can you imagine it?
and then keep going towards the big toe that's the next next toe and, and the big toe on your left foot and you feel all the toes and your left foot are relaxed and soft and gentle and feel the whole foot on your the left foot let it relax pressing against the the floor or your thigh or the chair wherever it's resting let it rest and go towards up towards the knee on your left leg let it relax and your left knee is nice and soft and rubbery and going up under the thigh on your left leg let it rest on its own weight go over the hip bones can you feel the hip inside of your left hip bone over the hip bone to the right hip and your right hip is now relaxed so you both of your hips are relaxed and now we go down on your right leg towards the knee on your right foot Going down towards your right foot, towards the ankle. And your whole right foot is resting, relaxing. <sighs> Relax. Let your lower part of your body be nice and soft. Give it kindness. You're not asking anything from your left or right foot. Let them relax. And now going up from the hip bones towards your stomach, stomach, your tummy. <sighs> Breathing into the stomach. In and out. Your tummy is one of those places where quite often we hold tension there. We pull our tummies back when we have tension in our bodies. Now, let your tummies be big like balloons. Breathe into your tummy. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. We're just sitting here, relaxing, breathing into the stomach. Keep going up on the back. Make sure your back is nice and soft, relaxed from starting from the bottom of the back. We keep going up. Keep going up towards the middle of the back. Make sure it's soft. Towards the shoulders, feel your shoulders are sinking in. Resting on top of that soft back. Your right shoulder is sinking in, every breath you take. And same with your left shoulder, it just keeps sinking in. Uh, how nice it is to relax. 
relaxed. Breathing into the shoulders, into your neck, there behind there. Quite often we carry the weight of the world on our shoulders all day. Now is the time to let those shoulders droop. Let the weight just roll off from your shoulders. Let the weight of the world fall off. Just breathing into the shoulders, kindness, softness. Oh, how nice it is to just to sit down, not to do anything. Going down from your right shoulder towards your right arm, from the shoulder down, let the hand droop down on its own weight, resting on your lap or wherever it is resting, towards the elbow. From the elbow, up to the wrist, let the whole hand be nice and soft. Let your right hand be soft like a baby's hand. Just resting on itself. Relax your right thumb. your right index finger don't go rushing around what does it feel there on your right middle finger do you feel softness Warmth, cold, pressure. And your right hand's ring finger. Starting from the nail, going down towards the knuckles. Let it relax. Starting from the right hand, pinky finger, small finger going up. Let the pinky be nice and soft. Your whole right hand is nice and soft and relaxed. Give your right hand loving kindness. Works hard all day on a keyboard, driving wheel, lifting things. Now it's just resting there, all the way from the shoulder. Let it relax. Same we have to do for the left hand. Feel the left hand's pinky. Give it softness and kindness. The ring finger on your left hand. Middle finger. Index finger. and the thumb and your whole left hand cupping softly 
resting. Like a hand of a baby when they're sleeping. Soft and gentle one. And keep going to your wrist on your left hand. Towards the elbow. Up in the shoulder. And again. Your whole left hand is soft and on its own weight it's just pushing down. From neck down you feel like your whole body is soft and gentle. It's as if you are floating in nice and warm water up to your neck. The body keeps itself erect, but you don't have to do anything. Just breathing. Now we go up from the neck on the back of your head. You feel the bones in the skull in the back of your head. Going up towards the top of the head. Feel your forehead. Let the forehead relax, relax, relax. Let the muscles around your cheeks and your eyes relax. Relax, breathe in kindness and softness into your face. Breathing in softly into your face. Every breath you take in breath is like kindness into your face. Ah, how nice it is to sit here. You're drawing in kindness from the world. You're breathing out if there's any attention Relax, relax. How nice it is to sit here. Let your whole face be nice and soft. Breathe in softness. Breathe out any attention. Breathe in softness. Breathe out any worries. Breathe in softness.
Breathe out. Anything which worries you. You might notice that the breath changes. Sometimes it's shallow. Sometimes it's deep. See it as like a wave in the ocean. You are part of this ocean. You're part of the nature. You are surrounded by warmth and kindness and softness. Can you see your breath like it's somebody else's breath? It just goes in and out. breaking in the ocean. Relax.
the breath turns into softer and softer, it's like silk flows in and out Can you see those little nuances in the breath? Can you see how the breath flows? It is interesting. Breath is beautiful. We could stay in this place forever. When you go deeper and deeper in this breath, time is starting to lose its meaning. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. We only have a little bit of time left. Enjoy. Enjoy this peace.
Now we are starting to come back to the world. Notice Notice your mind. Can you feel the peace, kindness? Breathe into your mind. Oh, how nice. There's lightness, there's kindness. This is what everybody wants. This is what everybody's looking for. Feel your body. Breathe into your body. This is softness, this is kindness. This is relaxation. This is what your body needs. This is health. This is how you cure your body. <sighs> Relax body is healthy body. Breathe in a few more times deeply into your whole body. How nice it is to sit. How nice it is to be relaxed. Now pay attention to your face. Smile. Breathing, smile into your face. How nice it is to meditate, to relax. Ah, oh, it's good to be here. Now open your eyes. And we are back into this world of ours. Welcome. Very good. Sadhu, sadhu, sad. Okay, Rachel, what's next? Thank you, Bante. That was absolutely beautiful. Um, would you like to, could you give us a down talk? Sure. I'm a bit relaxed. <laughs> okay, give a demo talk. Right, all right. What should we talk about? Oh. How about you choose this week? Right, okay, sure. Um, I've been quite busy myself, which is a bit strange being a monk uh, busy. Um, uh, we're building new kutis, new huts here in, in the monastery, so I've been getting coats and tenders and stuff. and. Also, I'm part of the building project for Newbury Buddhist Monastery in Melbourne. We have a Buddhist Society of Victoria. They're building a retreat center so as well. So I'm part of that team. And what else do I do? I'm a work monk in the monastery and all kind of things. And everybody knows life is busy. So what to do? There's nothing we can do about busyness of life. Life is busy. That's, how it, that's what it is. The only thing we can do is once in a while we have to learn how to drop the business of our lives 
and these are the things like that's why we do meditation but but the big thing is also once in a while we have to have mindfulness and that's uh, that's a, as a monk it's a really nice thing because i have plenty of time even though sometimes i'm busy but time meaning is in a, in a sense that i have to, once in a while i've been uh, thought by ajahn pram and the other teachers that, that uh, we have to reflect why we're doing the things we do, and that is mindfulness. Mindfulness always goes in hand in hand with um, kindness, obviously, but it also goes um, hand in hand with wisdom. Why are you doing certain things? Sure, you're busy. You you need to do your work. You need to take care of your family. You need to go shopping. You know, blah, blah, whatever it is in your life. But why? Ask yourself why are you doing certain things. Are you, doing, are you doing things out of kindness? Are you coming from the place of kindness? That's the important thing. Quite often, even if you have a lot of things to do, but if you come from a place of kindness, if you're doing out of your, the goodness of your heart, let's say you're helping others, or whatever you're doing in life, you, if you add kindness into it, it just makes everything so much easier. And if once in a while, even during your daily life or you come back home, even if you're not doing formal meditation, you do a bit of a reflection of why am I doing these things? Don't go just running around your life into running into your whatever they put that six feet under, they give you a little box and you're running into that. Don't run there as if this is, uh, you, you're trying to get things out of the way first. No. While running, think about why you're running. I was actually a runner myself. I don't run anymore because it's a bit difficult with my ropes on to run. They tend to be a bit restrictive on running. But um, we tend to run through our lives. And one of the reasons I became a monk was that I, I felt that I could not be part of that, um, that team. But even if you are part of the team, you are part of, think and do a bit of a reflection. And Ajahn Pramali told you a couple of weeks ago was the death contemplation. And it is, whereas it sounds a bit morbid, but the Buddha always taught us that um, uh, Maranasati, which is the uh, awareness of the death, it is really, really important. And it does add things, put in things in perspective. If nothing else, it's, um, it adds into perspective in the sense that whatever you do, all the mistakes in your life you've done are not that important. They Sure, they feel quite important sometimes uh, our day-to-day -day life, and you know we tend to carry them around everywhere we go with those shopping bags on our, of our life. But is it really that important? And all of us, we know it's not. All of us, we know the family problems we have, which are always, they tend to be quite sticky, uh, even for myself. All of those things, the death takes care of all of those. The, um, whatever it is in life, if, if you put things in perspective and the death contemplation puts things in perspective. That's what it's good at. And that's why it's a very good contemplation. And I, quite often when I've been teaching people, I, that's why I teach it. I, um, it. It should bring joy into your life. Hey, I'm alive. Hey, things are not that bad. We, we, I'm, still, I'm still okay. I'm meditating. I'm a um, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably okay person. And whatever those little things are, again, after I'm gone, Within a few years, no one's going to remember them. Every, every little of those important things you put in life, within a few years, they will be forgotten. So um, think of that. Have a little contemplation here and there. Very important. And um, one other thing is, um, which is important in my life, uh, been many years now, is obviously this stopping once in a while. Actually, while going around, once in a while, 
it doesn't mean you like physically stop, although you can do that. But once in a while, look at your mind. Stop for a while and you know see how much you are there in your up in your mind. You're making up this world of yours, and the way you. The way you look at it, the way you look at everything, other people, the nature, whatever it is, the, your perception is not accurate. You're, you're putting on these lenses of yours, which you, most of the time you have colored lenses on, and you look through the, the, the world through those lenses. What if once in a while you can have a little perspective and say, that's not accurate. And even if it is, you know, you think it is accurate, you, you can reflect that if you look at it differently, if you just like change your perception, the world changes with them, with, with that perception. Look at the kind things in the world. It, the more you look into, as we all know now, it's the social media and the, whatever the election is in the U.S. and all that, and you, the news, they, they feed on our instincts of primary thing that they keep us in with these, there was a stabbing now in Austria this morning, all of those things, they tend to drag us down. They drag us into looking the world in a certain way. Maybe we don't need to know everything. Maybe we don't need to concentrate so much of these horrible things in life. Maybe it's good enough for us once in a while detox ourselves from that world. Look into our mind, what it's doing to our mind. Try to uplift our mind. Where can you find uplift? Uh, upliftment in, into your life. It's, it's most likely it's not going to come from the news. Look at your mind. What does news do to your mind? Do you need to drag yourself all the time to that level? Could, it be this, could there be something else perhaps which brings that happiness and kindness into your mind? Easeness. It's so difficult to find ease, the easeness of when you're looking at the world through the internet and TV. And quite honestly, even for, for us monks, we have to restrain ourselves of not doing that all the time, because it, it will drag us down into that world as well. So we, are try, to, we try to find the happiness in our minds. That's our job, and that's really why, for us, this is a faster path for than uh, for maybe the rest of the people, because we really have to put the we put the effort into it. And obviously, I have great master like Ajahn Brahm, who's who's been doing it, and he's really brilliant at guiding us. And one of the key things how he he um, guides us into finding the happiness is he doesn't doubt the monks; he's always encouraging us. So remember, encouragement goes a long way. Do it for yourself and do it others. Even if you, you, you want to say something bad, hold it back. Don't do that because it just leaves into remorse and guilt afterwards. Try to bring up these uplifting things in your life and share them with others. It really goes a long way. So those are a few practical things I, I can think of in my own life, which might be helpful for everybody else. Is there any questions, comments, or complaints? Thank you, Bante. Does anyone want to ask any questions? Or make some comments with kindness? How is... Um, isn't it quite like sad with this news? I've been I, I've watched the news just even today. It's just amazing how they tend to drag you down, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, and that's I, I think the aim of these people. 
aim of these people who are doing that. They, they, I think that's the aim is to just create big um, waves and you know like make people hate them. It's it's amazing. Oh. <coughs> Bante, I, um, can you hear me? Yes. Is this Bante, can you hear me? Yes, Chris, I can hear you, yep. Uh, so just to counterbalance, just to counterbalance what you um, are saying, um, I, um, I was sitting around on YouTube to get some material, uh, YouTube clips, uh, to send to a diversional therapist for my mum who's in old folks home in Queensland today. Um, and um, I typed in random, random acts of kindness, mm. and uh, there are some really beautiful short YouTube clips uh, dedicated to doing exactly the opposite from what the six o'clock news does. To you, <laughs> in, term, in, in terms of scaring the hell out of you and uh, orientating you towards negativity, um, and you know I think that there's a natural inclination in us to do that anyway because of our nervous system. But uh, the news certainly profits from that quite dramatically. But I noticed just watching like five minutes of those, you know, uh, those things where, you know, people were doing the Good Samaritan thing or, you know, taking care of it, uh, an old, folk, old person crossing the road or, or a, you know, a wounded pet or something like that. Um, seeing other people be kind like that, I found, felt the sense of uh, lifting in myself. Um, and uh, thought, yeah, could have a regular dose of this each day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, random acts of kind, just viewing random acts of kind. I don't even have to be doing them. <laughs> um, and it's just to have a bit of a, a, a rub off effect. So, although most there's a hell of a lot of crap on YouTube, um, there are one or two of these uh, clips. And I think these people who make these videos are dedicated to actually got a get a bit of a counterbalance uh, in this direction there. So um, just want to put my two cents worth in there that that's the effect that it had on me. And um, mm. uh, just watching kind acts is, uh, can lift, I found lifted my nervous system. Mm. Great. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Would you like to comment? Would you like to comment? Oh, sorry, you asked me. Sorry, I thought you, you, you said somebody else asked me. Oh, that's true. I mean, uh, you, you're right. Uh, the, the problem is with, the, with everything is they, um, I mean, I, I work for Google and I, I was actually optimizing the search engine. And these days, they, everything is so um, geared towards our primal things. In our, you know, so once you start clicking things in YouTube, you tend to click from go forward to forward and it just sucks you in so it is a uh, but sure it's try mm. to find something you know good and kind is better and then just go and try and it's so easy to go with that kind of primal thing where uh, you go what the sort of but the um, gut feeling is but the sure i mean even little things like you know patting down your dog feeding your dog giving you know seeds to birds i can see why you know grandmothers and grandfathers are sitting in the park feeding the ducks because it, it just makes you feel good. Uh, I can see why people come to monastery to feed the monks. To, uh, it makes them feel good. Um, yeah, anything in life. You know, talking to each other over the phone. I'm now in COVID. I, I've been calling more and more, a bit more to my parents. It's important. Uh, you know, keep 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 in touch with your with your relatives, your um, uh, all those things. So it's um, we we need that as a human. We need that, and that's why we need mm -hmm. this kind of even this. This is a bit awkward, maybe meditating over the internet on this and that. But there's there's all of us here. There's there's this group of us. We are ded dedicated to this, and um, you know, the, we are we are you are part of something else. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to reflect or ask a question on kindness in particular? So Bante, if I could make a comment, I really thought that if your comment that if you add kindness in, it makes everything easier. Mm. It's really 
an important reflection and to actually ask ourselves, are we doing this from kindness? It is, as you say, so easy to be busy. So to, I'm going to really try hard to stop more often and just say, is this from a point of kindness? Yeah. I felt my whole body soften as you spoke and said, breathe in, breathe in kindness and softness. So hmm. the whole impact just on me was quite profound. So I can imagine that if I take that to other people, then that helps other people as well. Yeah, take a second of where, hang on, where do I come from? What, whatever, you know, I'm instead of dragging the people across the street, maybe they don't want to cross the street. You're just <laughs> To think about what you're doing, you know, if you, like, just one second, hang on, where's the mind? Oh, yeah, no, okay, it's not kind. Okay, well, switch a little bit, try to do a bit more, you know, kind, come from a place of kindness, and things tend to flow a lot easier, and people appreciate your effort maybe more. Yeah, thank okay. you. No worries. Anybody else? Anybody else want to say anything? Why? You've just softened everything. That's out. good. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I guess it was, oh, it's only 8, 8.14. Oh, right. We could have meditated longer. I just, because I couldn't see the time and I didn't want to open my eyes. So maybe it's a bit too early, but <laughs> it doesn't matter, okay. you know. Okay, it's yeah. beautiful. So it doesn't matter if we finish early. Sometimes we finish at 8. Or sometimes we finish at 8.30. Yeah. So sometimes we keep chatting to them. Yeah. And so if there aren't any more questions, maybe I'll finish the night with a, a thank you very much again for such a beautiful meditation on yeah. kindness and softness. Thank you. And Bob, that's what Bob asked, or that's the favorite meditation, Bob. Uh, that's the answer as well. Softness and kindness always rocks. That was Bob's question there in the chat box. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. I hope I see you again. Thank you. <clears throat> See ya. Okay. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. How do I leave? Good night. Good night. Bye. See you next night. week, everybody, wherever you've come from for tonight.